Today I'd like to talk about customizing Fusion 360's user interface as well as changing some of the preferences inside of Fusion to make uh, working in it a little bit more efficient. Uh, I'd also like to cover restoring the user interface should things become undocked. And here you can see a good example of that. Both my toolbar up top and my browser are undocked. So let's go and work and dock both of those. This is something that's very common for new users and they get very frustrated when they can't figure out how to put it back. So let's dock the browser, I'm sorry, the toolbar by going over these two uh, vertical lines. We're just gonna click on them and move up until we see that green line. When we let go, the toolbar is now docked. The browser is gonna work much the same way. Instead of going up, we're gonna go to the left. I'm gonna click on the heading move over to the left, I see the green line, I let go, and now both of those elements are redocked where they should be. The next thing I'd like to talk about is customizing the toolbars. The toolbars have a certain number of set commands. This should be what you guys have after Fusion is installed by default. But what if we want to add some commands on here that uh, aren't readily available? So for instance, maybe one of the commands I'm going to use a lot is the center point diameter circle. So from within the sketch menu, I can go find circle and center point diameter circle. And if we look, if we move over, we'll see this little arrow right there. And it's, when I hover over it, it says add to toolbar. When I click on that, that's now added onto the toolbar. Let's add a second one. So let's go and let's choose to do the fillet. So I'm going to go over fillet and I'm going to click the little up arrow. And when I do fillet is now on our toolbar. There are a couple ways you can remove commands you don't want. So I'm gonna hit the sketch menu again and I can go to the circle center point diameter. And when I do, now there's an X. When I click on the X, the circle center point diameter is no longer on my toolbar, it's gone. The other way, less obvious way to do this is just to click on the command and drag it into space and let go. And now that command is removed from your toolbar. Another very helpful user interface thing inside of Fusion 360 is the S key. The S key is a toolbox that will pop up wherever your mouse is out on the screen, so it reduces mouse movement, and it can be customized, and it's unique per workspace. So every one of the workspaces you see here on the left-hand side can have its own unique S key. So let's look at what that looks like. I'm going to click on the S key, and now you can see a model toolbox comes up. Uh, we have extrude, fillet, and chamfer on there. Maybe one of the commands I use a lot is loft. So even if I don't, even if I just want to use this command one time, I can type in what the command is. So from, from the search box, I'm going to type in LOFT, and there it is. Now, when I move my mouse over that, again, I get that same up arrow that appears. Click on the up arrow, it's added to my toolbox. So if I go ahead and click away now, and click on the S key, now you can see we, we've added the loft. If I want to remove it off of there, the same way it works what we just covered. So I'm going to type in LFT. When I move my mouse, there's an X. Or I can simply grab the command and drag it off my toolbar, and now it's removed from the toolbox. Before we move on to preferences, I'd like to work with this just the way that I have things. So if we look at my view cube, we have the Y, Z, and the X in the orientation that that is shipped uh, with Fusion as you install it. If we're doing a lot of CNC machining, we might want to change that up slightly. So let's see what that looks like. From the sketch, I'm going to choose a rectangle, center rectangle. I'm going to put it on my top plane, and I'm just going to drag out a box. Uh, we'll call this 60 millimeters by 115 millimeters. Enter. Go ahead and stop the sketch. I'm going to do extrude. And I'm going to drag this up a certain distance, 20 millimeters, I guess, and we'll go ahead and close that. Click OK. So if I switch over to CAM, when I go ahead and I create the setup, which defines where my work coordinate system is on the model, the orientation of it, and the stock size, and when I start the setup button, you'll see that my Z is facing the wrong direction. While it's quite simple to fix, uh, we'll show you a better way maybe you want to change this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, click on the top surface. You can see pretty easy to get it situated the way that you want. Let's go ahead and click OK. So to change the preferences, you're going to find your name in the upper right hand corner, hit the drop down, and go to preferences. 
On the general tab, there's a couple I recommend that you might want to change, especially if you're doing modeling or uh, uh, cam machining, I should say. The first is the default modeling orientation. I'm going to go ahead and change this so Z is up. Another preference that people may want to change is depends on what CAD system you come from. If you're new to Fusion, I'd recommend you leave it at Fusion. If you come from SolidWorks, Inventor, or Alias, if we hit the drop down, you can see that we have those different choices. My background for a very long time has been Inventor, so I'm going to set mine to be Inventor. I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply there. We can also see as we go through the different environments, we can see uh, different aspects of them. So for units, the default units for a design, I like to work in inches, so I'm going to change that. And for cam, I also like to work in inches, so I'm going to change those. One area you might want to have a look at is the preview area. We're not going to cover any one of these right now, but there's some different things in here you can turn on if you want to take a look at what's coming and what's being tested inside of Fusion 360. So I'm going to click OK, and what you'll see is nothing really changed in this design. But notice the Y is up, the Z is coming at us, and the X is going to the right. If I hit X here, it'll start a new design. Almost will appear as nothing happens. I don't want to save this. And when this opens up, now you'll see my Z is up, my X is still to the right, and my Y is now pointing away from us or towards us. So when we do the same, create a rectangle, center rectangle on this top plane, drag this out, let's call this 5 by uh, 2.5, stop the sketch, extrude this, we'll pull it up maybe a half of an inch and click OK. Now when we switch to the cam environment and start our setup, the Z is automatically in the right orientation for doing uh, work on a milling machine. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So those are the couple of the preferences that I just wanted to talk about that maybe you can set up to make things a little quicker, a little easier. I uh, hope you guys liked it. If there's things you'd like me to cover or would like me to show, please comment below and I'd be happy to cover those.